I am so excited today because I got a package in the mail that I have been waiting for and I am so glad it's here. <laughs> I ordered from Goulet Pens and there's some stuff in here that I'm super excited about. So I, Lauren, will be opening up this package and I actually think it's going to take a couple videos because I want to do some proper samples and tests of the things that are in this package. So I ordered this and uh, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so these are some empty standard short international cartridges for fountain pens. I bought these because I have been washing out the ones that I've used up with the idea that I could refill them with a different ink, but a lot of them have been kind of stained. So my thought was if I get some empty ones, at least for lighter colors where the stain might seep into the ink itself, I don't know how that works. Let me know if you've had luck with refilling old cartridges, but I bought some of these just to have them on hand because there is a pen in this box that I know I'm going to want to use with some bottle inks I have. There were some mixed reviews on the converter for this pen, so I bought some of these to use, at least in the meantime. You can see in here, I got a lot of ink samples. I've started buying ink samples lately because I sometimes I'll buy a whole bottle and I'm not super happy with the ink and so this way I can try it out, I can put it in a pen and use it for a couple weeks and then I will know if I wanna buy a bottle of it or not. I am planning at the moment two ink swatching videos. Let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see sooner than later and I'll push it forward in the line of things I've been waiting to share with you. All right, so this is what I've actually been really excited to show you. I bought not one, but two new Caveco limited edition colors. I happened to like both of the March colors that they released and so I bought both of them. <laughs> I had seen that this one was starting to sell out on other sites and Goulet Pens hadn't posted theirs yet so I kind of jumped at it as soon as they came in stock and uh, this one is one that I've wanted for a long time and this color just pushed me to buy it. So. Let's take a look at these a bit closer and I'll tell you what they are if you didn't already know. I love Caveco fountain pens. They are probably my favorite, at least my favorite fountain pen at the moment is a Caveco pen. And so when they release a new color that is something I really love, I just kind of end up jumping at it or putting it on my Christmas list or whatever the case may be. And so let's start with this one because it seems to be very popular right now. This is the Iridescent Pearl Caveco Sport fountain pen. I love anything that's iridescent and rainbowy. Oh look, even the box, I love the way they did the packaging on this. So this is a, it's one of the plastic Caveco Sport pens and on the less expensive side, which is great. The other thing that I did was I ordered a broad nib, which I don't have a broad nib Caveco pen yet. We'll see how it goes. The reason why I did that is because I decided I wanted to use unicorn-like fountain pen inks, and those tend to do better, I've found, if I have a nice broad stroke. That way all of the shimmer and the sheen in those inks can be seen as they were intended to. They also tend to be lighter colors, so I figured that would help there, but we'll see how I like it. And here it is. I've already watched a bunch of review videos on this. Oh, I love it. So cool. Look at that. This is ink on my hands, by the way. <laughs> Purple ink. Um, I, I love this. It's so, okay, so you gotta see it from all the angles. At first glance, it's just kind of a frosty transparent, but when you flip it around and you look at it in different light, it can be a little bit of green, a little bit of purple, some pink or blue in there. It's just very, it's iridescent, but it's very nuanced and really cool. Wow. It has the silver colored steel nib and it's a broad nib. I love the tiny nibs on the Kaveco Sport Band. So excited. So the ink that I had in mind for this first is the Sailor Manio Haha. I have a sample of that ink and I tested it using a glass pen, a dip pen, and I haven't inked it up in a fountain pen yet. I was kind of waiting for the weather to warm up and get some nice springtime colors going in my journals. And so, man, when I saw this pen, 
I knew I had to get it and I knew that that would be what I use this ink for. These usually come with a little blue cartridge in there. I'm just gonna put that aside. Hopefully, if this is a pen that you like, you can still get one. They have been selling pretty fast from what I can tell. So, really cool, really unique fountain pen for sure. And here is the second fountain pen that I bought in this order. So this is actually the first of its kind that I have owned. This is the Quebeco Lilliput in green and it is their limited production color for March. So if you've seen my fountain pen collection video, you know that I love mini fountain pens and I would definitely love to make a video just about mini fountain pens and comparing the sizes and all of that. But until now, I didn't own a Lilliput Quebeco. Oh, it's so tiny. I had heard that it was really tiny but never actually seen one in person until now, and I love this. So aside from the fact that I love mini pens, I love Caveco pens, and I loved this green, the main thing propelling me forward to buy this is that it seemed a lot less expensive than all the other Caveco Lilliput pens that I've seen in stores. So usually they're up in the over 100 sometimes $200 range. I don't remember exactly where they were, but they were a little bit out of my price range for fountain pens. And this one was $60. I don't know why. Maybe it's the metal that they used, but this is definitely <laughs> closer to my price range as fountain pens go. Oh, it's a little squeaky. Very squeaky. I wonder if that will, if that's something I can Fix. I can't really tell, but I feel like the nib on this is the same size as the Coveco Sport, so I'm going to test that next to it real quick. Oh my gosh, look how small it is. Pictures that I've seen of this pen did not prepare me for how tiny it is. Oh my gosh, definitely my smallest fountain pen so far, and I, I love mini pens. I'll have to see how I like writing with it. Um, the Coveco Sport is kind of perfectly sized for my hand, so this may be a little too small for me, but... My goodness, it's is it cute. It has the Caveco logo on here and printed on the top. So I'm going ahead and screen this on the back. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that. So it actually ended up being a good length for my hand anyway and just very, very thin in comparison to the other pens. Actually, I have another pen I'd like to compare this one to. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at that. I had a feeling they'd be similar. So this is the Diplomat Traveler in the flame blue finish compared to the Caveco Lilliput. So they are, I want to say that the Traveler, the Diplomat Traveler is a little bit thicker, but not by much. They're pretty similar down when you get to the grip down here, because that gets smaller. And the Caveco is actually longer when you have it posted. I don't typically post this. I don't want to scratch up the flame blue finish, but you can see when capped, it's similar. Look at that. <laughs> There is just something magical about mini fountain pens that are like a normal pen when you have the cap posted on the back and then when you put the cap on the front of the pen, it just becomes so tiny. This is in comparison to the Quebeco Sport size-wise. So this is much thicker than both of those. Wow. Wow! Really goes to show you that you can't really tell by looking at pictures online sometimes. I love it though. In an unsurprising turn of events, it didn't take me long before I decided that I did want to fill this iridescent pearl sport pen up with the Sailor Manio Haha ink. You can see here that I did test this out with a dip pen and it matches so well. So what I did was I took a syringe and one of those empty cartridges that I got in this Goulet Pens order, and I am going to fill it up. This is a sample that I got from Pen Chalet a while ago, and I just had been waiting for the right time to use it, and this is the right time. I'm so excited. This is also the first time that I am filling up a pen using this syringe, so we will see how it goes. 
I also am really careful with these samples. I always close them up before I put them down because they are so easy to knock over. They're very lightweight and top heavy. So I had heard that this was pretty easy and I didn't really have too much of a problem. I just went ahead and used the syringe to slowly fill up the empty cartridge. So far so good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pop the cartridge into the pen. Now because these cartridges are already open, they don't have like a seal on them. I did push it pretty hard just to make sure that it actually did attach, but no leaking has happened yet. It's doing all right. Went ahead and screwed the rest of the pen body on and put the top on. And anytime I'm using a pen with a cartridge, what I end up doing is I put it nib down into a jar like this and just leave it there for a while so that it can run down through the feed. This is a couple hours later. I added this bronze clip, which was a separate purchase. Actually, I already had that around. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test out this pen. This is my first time using the broad nib with a Coveco sport pen. So I am just gonna sort of add on to what I had here in my swatch book the last time I tested this ink out and I am liking it so far. I still can't fully decide if I like using broad nibs as much as I like medium nibs, but I feel like it's good to have some options around. And you can see as this ink starts to dry, it's really spectacular. I think I read somewhere that this is called chroma shading, where the shading as the ink dries changes multiple colors. It doesn't change once it dries, but you can see that there are little bits of purple and blue and green and pink in there, and it is just absolutely stunning. And it's not a sheen. It doesn't change when you adjust the light source or tilt the paper, but it's so beautiful. My goodness. So as soon as I swatch my inks and test them out for the first time, I love to make a little journaling spread and actually write out a paragraph using the pen because I find that just writing random words and scribbles and shapes doesn't really give you a great idea of what the ink looks like when you're using it for real. So I like to use script and also print, handwriting, that way I can see kind of how the ink settles depending on the type of lettering that I'm using. Usually script has shading at the end, maybe the beginning of the word, whereas when I print, you pick up the pen more often so you end up with shading on every letter. And for some inks I prefer the print, for, for some inks I prefer the look of the script. And for this one, I think what I have decided is that it's very light. It for sure depends on the paper. This is Tomoe River paper. I think it is the old version of Tomoe River paper. So it shows the actual facets and colors in the ink really beautifully, but it to me feels more like a decorative kind of ink that you would use for a heading rather than a whole paragraph. As far as the pen goes, I think this is my favorite of my plastic Caveco Sports. I tend to prefer the metal ones, and since I've started buying the metal ones, I haven't been using my plastic ones as often. But the look of this one is just so unique and beautiful that it's probably going to end up being my second favorite after my gold Caveco All Sport. It is just really pretty. I clip it to my notebook and it looks amazing. I am so, so happy with this purchase. So there you go. If you were curious, as curious as I was with the Sailor Manyo Haha ink looks like when you actually write in a journal for a paragraph using that ink, it does look like magical unicorn ink to me is <laughs> really pretty. I do have a few other inks that I think would work well that might be slightly more usable as far as paragraphs and journaling goes. I think I'm going to mostly use this for headings like I mentioned before and I don't know little dotted lines and stars. It's so pretty and it matches the pen really well. All right well I hope that you enjoyed this first look at the two Caveco collection 
limited production colors from March 2022. In the comments below, I would love to hear which of these two pens is your favorite and are you getting them or are you going to pass on this particular fountain pen limited edition release? For me, it just happened to grab me. They happened to release two colors that I really wanted. So here we are, but I hope that getting a closer look at these helps you make your decision if you hadn't decided already. I hope you're having a really good day and I will see you next time.